We're on site here at an installation location. We're going to pre-charge the system outside the house just so that uh, we can get it uh, when we make the complete the installation we're ready to go inside because the owner of the property allowed us to do this and let the water run into their garden. We have already uh, taken a, uh, a reading of the house pressure here. We have 50 pounds pressure in the home. We've uh, written that down on our uh, call sheet. I have a coiled up hose here that I brought along with me. I'm going to take a TDS reading off of our little leaky faucet here or leaky uh, hose bib. I've got my TDS meter from HM Digital here. I'm getting a TDS reading of 256. It also re me re measures uh, temperature. We've got 52 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to log this information down on my call sheet so I have this. 52 degrees, 256 TDS, and my house pressure is 50 PSI. This is good information to keep on record back at the uh, back at the shop for this particular location. We've unpacked the unit, installed the cartridges. We have our feed hooked up to our our regulator here. I have removed the PW pin and replaced it with a nice gauge here that we uh, that we put together. I've removed the SQ pin on the opposite side and brought together a piece of tubing along with a ball valve that I've adjusted the outflow uh, down to a nice flow. Okay, uh, and we have our FA2 line here that is hooked up to an additional ball valve that is wide open. That is our product water line. I have my waistline just rolling into the uh, into the bushes here. That's my D line. I've turned the feed on. We witness water rushing through the system, filling up, and with my SQ port opened up just slightly, we have and my uh, my product water port, the FA2 line opened up. We've collapsed the bladder. We have water on the outside of the bladder, and what we're doing right now is we've set up both the SQ and the product water to where I can get a TDS reading of rejection. Now what I'm going to do is we have our feed TDS being 50, I'm sorry, 256. I'm going to take my product water because it's been running for about 10 minutes and I'm going to capture the product water drooling a pencil lead diameter into my little sample cup. I'm going to dump the, the first one out just so that we're not uh, getting any registration of the feed water. So we dump the first one out. We get a reading here. And I'm down to 17 parts per million. We've got excellent rejection. Excellent rejection. Now, just as another note here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a reading off my SQ line here. We're going we're gonna to see what it tells us. So we're going to dump that first load out. And out of my SQ line, it should be greater than the feed. Let's take a look at this. 310. So this is the, the SQ line right now is acting as I'm, my waste concentrate flow. So it's greater than the feed. It's uh, uh, what is added to the feed stream coming out of the concentrate side is what has been taken away from the value of the FA2 line. So it tells me we've got a, we, we have a great rejection rate. The system's operating properly. Internally, we have uh, all of our O-rings are intact internally. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the SQ, remove the SQ tube, and replace it with a pin after I turn my feed off so that I'm not under pressure. So I turn the feed off. I open up the line here. Reducing pressure on the SQ line. I remove the SQ, replace it with a pin. Now I'm ready to go there. And um, I turn my feed off, or my uh, FA2 line off. And what I should start witnessing under these conditions is an increase of the pressure on my PW line here through this gauge. And I should stick around for a few minutes just to make sure that 
when it comes up to pressure, we should start witnessing pressure building up on this. If we can focus in on this, I'd really appreciate it. So if we can focus in on this gauge, zoom in, we're gonna see that we have pressure building up on that line almost instantly. And when it reaches uh, just a hair above under these operating feed pressures, when it gets up to about uh, just a little bit above 30 pounds under these conditions, the gauge may wobble a little bit and then it should just drop to zero. And our waistline here, uh, you'll notice that I have a valve that's hooked up to my D line. It's open. And I'm gonna hold on to my I'm gonna hold on to my waistline, my D line here. And here's my D line. And we're gonna see a shot of water and air come out of this any minute. And under these conditions, the gauge should drop right to zero. And when it drops to zero, the waistline will open up and uh, now I know that I'm making water and I can walk away and complete the rest of my installation in the house. I'll, I'll make my feed water adapter. There we go. The waistline is open. My PW port is dropped to zero. I am now making water and refilling the storage bladder. As product water is going into the storage bladder, it's displacing the water that was used to squeeze the bladder and it is joining the concentrate flow that is determined by the control valve and that displaced water is joining the waistline as an add-on to the waste stream here. Okay. Now if I took this line right here and I put it into a bucket under these operating conditions, eh, I might accumulate three gallons of, uh, of waste to a full gallon and a half of, uh, of product water stored inside of this. But I'm just going to let this roll right out here onto this little plant here and let it grow. I'm going to walk away now and I'm going to go inside and drill my hole through the kitchen counter and uh, hook my waistline up, my, my product water dedicated faucet, and I'm also going to hook up the feed. Once this thing fills up and shuts down, I should witness a full uh, uh, line pressure on the PW gauge when it's full and shut off. I'll turn my valves off here, turn my feed off so I'm not dribbling uh, water in through the house as I bring it into the kitchen and uh, so forth and we'll get this ready for installation.